Welcome to LegacyCast, your source for hearing from top influencers, industry experts, and successful business owners who are telling their unique story about life, values, goals, business strategies, and the various causes they are so passionate about. Future generations will come to be impacted by what is happening today, whether positive or negative, and our mission is to focus on what is going to affect change for the better. Hosted each weekday by James Snow, a former U.S. Army combat medic, now founder and principal advisor of James Advisors Group, a full-service financial planning firm in North Texas. This is Legacy Cast. Welcome, Legacy Cast listeners. This is your host, James Snow, coming to you from North Texas. And I have with me a friend of mine, Matt Sapula, and a Marine Corps veteran, which is an exciting thing. I always love having Marines on the program. Uh, any veteran, of course, is a good one, but you know, Marines, they, they like to make a big hole for us Army guys to, to go into. So uh, we, we love us in, love us in <laughs> our heads. So uh, welcome to the program, Matt. Yeah, I'm glad to be here and honored, be, honored to be here. So uh, when, when we were talking uh, offline before before Matt came on the program, uh, he was just telling me a little bit about a convention that he has going uh, coming up at the beginning of 2019. So uh, if you can just maybe just give us a little, little info about that, uh, Matt, uh, the convention going on in San Antonio, I think you said. Sure thing. Sure, sure thing, James. Yes, you know we believe that there's a there's a war on capitalism. There's a war on entrepreneurship, and uh, the theme of our event in January for those who are considering the business world, those considering working for themselves, as I have the last 20 years, we have an event called the Free Enterprise War, where myself, my business partners, many other colleagues from across the country, uh, who have built you know multiple businesses uh, across the United States, are gathering together in San Antonio, at the Marriott Riverwalk. And we got some phenomenal guest speakers lined up. I've got a, a – it's not official yet, but uh, we've got a, a gentleman. He's a Navy SEAL, and he's releasing a book. And uh, we're in the current negotiations right now, but we're going to have that type of effect over a three-day period in San Antonio coming up in January. So I'm very excited about that. We just signed a quarter million dollar contract with a hotel, and uh, we're just excited about the value we're bringing to the marketplace. That's exciting. Uh, yeah, I remember that, that hotel there uh, when I was stationed down in San Antonio. You know, when I was back in my combat medic training days, you know, I was stationed down there at Fort Sam Houston, and we spent a lot of time down, down at the river walk. So I know exactly uh-huh. what you're talking about. You know, nice setting for you to be having that thing. So Perfect. Perfect. That's awesome. <clears throat> So uh, here on the on the program Legacy Cast, you know, obviously, you know, we we finance guys. We we kind of have a, a certain mindset when it comes to legacy. But when you when you hear that term legacy, uh, what what comes to mind for you first? So I think legacy. I think you know your last name. What does your last name mean? What is your handprint on the world? What is what is your you know what was your drop in the bucket ripple effect? That's going to affect not only your current life, but those that you love and care about and the second, third, fourth, fifth generation away from you. Um, did you leave the world better uh, when, you ent- when you left it than when you first entered it? You know, so I, I think legacy is a responsibility. I think legacy is something that uh, we should constantly be thinking about. Not to say that your life is ever going to be perfect, but uh, it's also the sharing of family wisdom that everybody has a different experience. And depositing those experiences and the lessons learned from those uh, can help better serve that uh, you know, the, the community that you're part of, whether it be your blood DNA family or the people that believe in you type of family. Yeah, well, very well put. Uh, you know, I always like to tell people, you know, it's, it's kind of like your story. Uh, it's your story being told your way about all the things that, that you were passionate about that you did to make the world better. And, you know, that story being told, you know, like you say, you know, three to seven generations. Yeah, you know, I, I like to look at, you know, I try to look at a seven generation span there because this, this is the kind of impact that we should be should be trying to, to put out there. Yeah, and the, the, the powerful thing, like, for example, this podcast, you know, once you publish it and you put it out there to the world, you know, um, 
who knows who's going to run into it 50 years from now. It right. could be your children. It could be my children, children's children. And so we're actually speaking out to that legacy, you know, and uh, let's see what our, our legacy thinks about it, you know, 50, 60, 100 years from now when they stumble across an hour. That's, That's true. And people should be very mindful you know, about, about what they're doing and, and deliberate, I think. So uh, do, you, do you feel like uh, people should, uh, should really put some deliberate and intentional uh, action into or, or thought into what they're doing for a legacy? I, I, for me, I, I think so, but I think early on in our lives, I think we don't think about it. I think we're caught so much in the survival phase of life um, where you don't think legacy. So, uh, so make a short answer. Yeah, hundred percent. I believe everybody should be thinking about legacy. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in the finance. We're in the finance world. I'm in the insurance industry. It's all about planning for worst case scenarios so we can pass on at least a financial inheritance to the people that you love and care about that they're provided for. Um, and, and so hundred percent, and I think when people don't plan on legacy, so it's either you're going to pass on a blessing or you're going to plat, you're going to pass on grief. Right. And I think, uh, sadly, a lot of people pass on grief and one generation away, two generations away, people forget about you, mm -hmm. uh, because you did nothing to impact. I mean, uh, you know, my, my, my great grandfather, my great, great grandfather, I don't know them. Our family comes from the Philippines. I couldn't tell you. I can barely tell you my grandfather's name. And I definitely can't tell you my great great grandfather's name. Mm. Not that they weren't good people. Not that they weren't hardworking folks from the Philippines uh, that uh, worked to, to make a living for the family in the 1800s, 1900s. But for some reason, I don't, their great grandson doesn't know them. I think that's a problem. And not just you know, not just on the financial level, but you know, even even the things we do you know, in society, uh, in our communities, um, if the uh, educational legacies that we pass along, you know, th those things are important as well because you know the stories will be told about the things that we did, uh, the the changes that we made, and the lives that we affected for the positive. So, you know, all of those things you know culminate you know into you know that that big story. Yeah, I totally agree, hundred percent. You know, we we sometimes, especially with dealing with money, we learn more from our bad experiences with money than our good. Right. So how come we don't pass those experiences on? And that's just as good as passing mm -hmm. on cash. That's true. So uh, when you're looking at uh, legacy, how does that affect what you do in business? Um, well, it, it, it does everything you know, with, with what we do in business. Well, number one, I, I deal in a legacy type of industry. Mm -hmm. And then number two, from a business planning standpoint, talking talk to entrepreneurs, you know, what is, what is your succession plan? How do you hand down? You know, well, when, when you ride this pony, you have an exit strategy. Right? Who's going to be taking over your business or does your business die with you? Does mm -hmm. your legacy die with you? Or do you have somebody carrying on that torch? And so you know, we're, we're very thoughtful of it. I mean, you know, we're, we're three weeks away from getting together with my mentor to go over my business plan for 2019. You know, I mean, business plan, uh, well, yeah, business plan, because I have a plan for what's going to happen in 2019, because that has, a, that has a, um, a ripple effect and goes on in 2020, 2030. And, and sometimes people don't even think, uh, you know, 10 years ahead. I remember sometimes I, uh, I, was, I was still in the Marine Corps. So what is your life going to look like five years from now? I said, I, I, could, I could barely get past today. Right. let alone what's going to happen five years ago. But I think if people think right. more legacy and they think of what their life is going to look like, I just asked a business partner of mine today, what do you want? He goes, I don't know. Well, if you don't know what you want or you don't, you don't know what your legacy wants or what your legacy should look like, guess what's going to happen? Nothing. Right. right? And, then, and then you check out and your name goes away like dust. And for some people, that's, that's important. For some people, that's not. I think it's important. You think it's important. But... You know, I, I think it's. I think a lot of us are driven by, like, unconsciously, the fact that we uh, we want to be respected, that we want to be known. But unless you do something about it, that's not going to happen. That's true. That's true. And and that leads me towards uh, one of one of my next questions is as far as uh, the the business plans and the financial plans. Yeah, you know, a lot of 
a lot of people, and, and unfortunately I've seen it with, with our veteran communities, is a lot of people starting a business and they, they don't have that framework. They don't, they don't have the business plan and the financial plan put into place. Uh, you know, how, how would you answer you know, that situation? You know, it's, it's, it's uh, how can we take the best of what we learned in the military, extract it, and apply that to our regular civilian world? And, and for some guys, they've left the structure behind. There's a reason why we follow an SOP, right. the standard right. operating procedure that an 18-year-old 18, 18 can hold this weapon, can read, can read this order, can, can delegate the order, can make sure the orders carry through and supervise and, you know, and all that stuff. How come we don't apply that to our regular, our, our regular life when we get out the military? So I, I think a lot of that can be transferred over. It's just that we don't have the community when we leave because you know when when we're in in the in the military, you got your brothers, you got your unit, and if you don't remember, somebody around you is going to help remind you. Well, when you leave the military. You don't. You lose that support network. You lose that camaraderie. You lose that brotherhood. That's and it's a, the, the ladies of sisterhood of being part of something bit bigger than you. And I'm thankful of podcasts like yours that is creating a community that people can get back together and at least there's a voice. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and I totally agree that. Yeah, that that was especially you know part of part of my transition struggle was you know just not having that community and and that's. Very similar for a lot of a lot of the veterans that you know when they came back home is just not having that, and so you know I, I totally agree with you there. <clears throat> yeah, I've 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 been out. I've been out now, you know, ten plus years. I am just now connecting to the veteran community. It's been a, the last couple of years I've been connected mm -hmm. back to the veteran. I wish I had when I was coming out active duty. There was never a direct resource a community of brothers and sisters in the military that, that wore the uniform that said, okay, here's what to expect. Mm -hmm. Here's some opportunities. Here's, here's what you need to avoid. Here's where you need to get your shit together. Like I didn't have that. I had to figure out and follow, you know, follow my face and realize that when you get out, nobody gives a shit. And we should do that. <laughs> you know, uh, we, like, like nobody cares if you're a sergeant, nobody cares if you're a lieutenant. Nobody cares if you're a major. You might, if you don't, if you don't care enough about you, you're driving Lyft for a living. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's your transition plan in the car by yourself, driving other people. But if you want legacy, something that you need to connect yourself into in terms of a community. Yeah, yeah, spot on. <clears throat> so, as, as a CEO and an entrepreneur. Uh, what would be maybe, are there a few things that still keep you up at night when you're with your business? Yeah. The biggest thing that kept me up at night is customers. You know, when I first got at the Marine Corps, I got involved in the insurance industry. I was like, shit, who do I sell to? The, right. I was, I was 25 years old, 26 years old. I, I had nobody, I had nobody to sell to. I, I had nobody to, to help me with sales. I was learning this craft all by myself. Uh, so that's definitely what kept me up at night. So learning marketing, mm -hmm. learning business development, learning, um, learning my craft outside of just being an insurance agent slash financial advisor. I, right. I had learned all aspects of this. Like there's no such thing as a job description as an entrepreneur. Everything is your job description. Yeah. <laughs> everything's your, everything's your responsibility. And so until I, I found a way on how to sell, uh, I found a way to handle and deal with rejection, on uh, how to handle um, infrastructure and creating infrastructure with inside my business, I was constantly in a position of frustration. But uh, you know, thank God for learning those things. And, and uh, I was aware that I, I, I needed to, some guidance once I figured that stuff out. But I think it took me like five, six, seven years to, to get my head out of my ass. Yeah, I, I can certainly relate with that personally as well. <clears throat> so what, what do you think maybe um, are some of the, the reasons why um, entrepreneurs are failing in their endeavor of you know, starting a business or, or just giving up in general? Um, I think a 